So I'm here with Clark Spencer, producer of Zootopia. So how does it feel to have your film recognized critically as well as beloved by lots of people who are about this top? It's an amazing experience. You know, when you embark on these movies, you always hope that the world will find them. You never know. Uh, for me, I always try to fall in love with the idea of the film so that irrespective of how it performs, I know that was an idea I was attached to and the concept of this film of making it entertaining but also having a really great message about bias and stereotyping was really important to me so I was I was on from the beginning but then to see how it's been embraced around the world has been phenomenal. For you what's the most exciting part of the process is it you know sort of when the idea comes in and you get that green light is it when you first see that animatic is it when you see it on the big screen for the first time in a room full of people? There's kind of two parts I love one is that first bit of animation when it starts to come in because we spend several years just developing the idea and talking about the story so you start to wonder is this ever really going to happen but when those first pieces of animation come in you start to see those characters move and come to life it's an incredible experience but the second one is actually the as terrifying as it is and it is totally terrifying the test audience screenings because there's something phenomenal about watching it with an audience that knows nothing about your movie it hasn't even been marketed to them so they're completely coming in blind and watching what they laugh at what they feel is emotional what they maybe even where they start to stir and you realize we need to figure out how we get that through that part a little faster but was there anything was there any was there anything that you learned during the test screening that you then went back in and tweaked anything that was a surprise to you you know not on this film the interesting thing is we were really wondering about how people would feel we were talking about this type of topic of bias and stereotyping and so we really wanted to know if people felt like it was too much if it wasn't if it wasn't being done delicately enough there were certain scenes that we really wanted to watch people to see how they reacted to it but people loved it I think there were surprised because it's a movie that sneaks up on you. It really starts as a as a fun animal film that's funny and you're seeing these characters out there and you get this dynamic between Jason Bateman and Jennifer Goodwin, but then slowly you start to realize, oh wait, this is going way deeper. This movie's actually talking about this concept of, of, of subconscious bias. And it's a pretty big important thing and so it was fun to watch the audience sort of start to react to that in terms of thinking, wow, we're really in for a very interesting animated film, because you don't expect that out of animation. No, but it's one of the things that I love about animation. It's a medium that you can use to tell really deep stories. A key part of that, of course, is casting. Yes. So tell me a little bit about the background on the casting for it. So we always knew we wanted Jason Bateman from the beginning because he has the most amazing ability to be likable, even though he's playing kind of a, a, a little bit of a sleazy character. You know, look at all of his roles. He always does it. So, so he was a first choice on that side of it. And then when we were thinking about the female rabbit character for Judy Hopps, we really thought about Jennifer Goodwin because she's just such a sweet individual. One of the interesting things about animation is we tend not to go to people and say, put on a different voice or become a different character. We tend to like the person to be who they are kind of themselves really because that's what we're hiring we're, we're only going to be using their voice we're not actually going to be seeing their face or their body movement or, or that side of acting so for us the voice is the most important thing so they were immediates for us but then I have to say Idris Elba it was amazing because he, you know, we love him and Luther and, and everything he does, but we'd never really seen him do comedy. Mm -hmm. And he had so much fun doing the comedy in this film. He really enjoyed doing the recording. Are show. there any clips you got from him in the recording booth? We need some YouTube clips of this. <laughs> we probably have some somewhere, yeah. He was just having a blast because for him, it was using a different acting muscle than he normally gets to use. He's always playing the big heavy, but, and, and you know, he's still the chief of police, but he gets to have this comedic side to him, so he loved that. As you said earlier, these projects can take a long time to make. So as a producer, when you have a passion project that's taking a while, how do you deal with that? How do you stay motivated? I think one of the keys in animation is we're lucky because we are always seeing something new. So even if we're in that early phase of developing the story and looking at the script and even doing the storyboarding, we have visual development artists who are creating paintings of what the world may look like. So usually every week you have something new that comes in that says, Oh my God, that's going to be so amazing when we actually get that on the screen. And then when it gets into layout and into animation and the lighting, you start to see those pieces of it. I think that's the key. Otherwise, I think you're right. We would ultimately get to that place of feeling like, how long am I on this movie? But they go by very more quickly than you would actually think. And um, something else I'm curious about is for you, is there any 
unexpected skill or thing that you learned kind of coming up that has been really beneficial in your producing career? You know, it's interesting. When I, I actually come from finance. That was my background. I worked on Wall Street. I was a, a finance person within the Disney company. So when they asked me to produce, they had me have lunch with a female producer who had just finished doing Mulan, and she said something really important to me. She said, as a producer, the most important thing for you is to figure out how do you get the director's vision on the screen. And as somebody who comes from finance, that's not a natural thing. Your natural thing is to say, I got a schedule, I got a budget, that's what I have to follow. And I learned very quickly that you get a team of people and you put them together and you are that person in between who's trying to decide where where are we going to focus today, creatively or production schedule wise. And nothing matters more than making a great movie. Really, honestly, that's what it comes down to. So feeling like you're that person's partner, you're the director's partner is really something I learned early on. That's interesting too. So from a producer's perspective, what can a director do to help you do that? I think um, a director who's obviously very communicative about what they're thinking and, and what they want and fundamentally building that relationship to say, well, we really need to think about this in a different way and then them being creative as to coming up with those solutions because it's not always what they think first is the right idea. There may be a different way to go about it that might either save time or save money or even get to a better uh, end result. So I think it's just that communication and really building that relationship. That's that's critical, especially if we're going to spend four or five years working together. we got to really kind of like each other and, yeah. and know how to communicate well. Well, thank you so much for taking the time to talk, talk to us, talk to the PGA. Have a wonderful time tonight. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome.